Hi, I'm Scott Altman, commander of STS-125, and you're watching NASA TV. the astronauts now walking out of the astronaut quarters boarding the astronaut van. Got Altman now Climbing on board, here he comes through the hatch onto the flight deck from the uh, lower crew cabin. We're joined now here in firing room four with astronaut Janice Foss. Once, once you're on board, and as we're seeing here, they're helping them strap into their seats and things, and uh, is, is everyone very preoccupied with the activities that they have to to do to get ready for the launch at this point, or are they thinking about uh, more about what's coming up on orbit, or what's the mindset when you're getting ready to be, when you're being strapped in, getting ready to go? A little bit of all of the above. <laughs> there are duties that you have assigned that change with time, and so you're thinking ahead to make sure that you're ready for the next thing you're supposed to do. You also have a process you have to go through that includes comm checks that you need to get done in a smart fashion so you don't slow up the timeline. So right now, they are very focused on just the seat stuff. But as soon as you get in your seat and they move on to the next person, then they're listening to all the communications that come in, all the ground launch sequencer stuff that's going on, and trying to monitor any issues that might be arising might affect what they'll be doing next. Atlantis launch director. Hey, Atlantis, ready to copy launch director. Okay, Scooter, well, look, it's a great day to go fly. So on behalf of the KSC Processing and Launch Team, I'd like to wish you, your crew, and the whole Hubble Space Telescope team a, a great mission. Good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here in about 11 days. Well, from the whole crew, Mike, I just want to say thank you. All I can uh, really think is that at last our launch has come along. It's been a, a long time coming. I know it took the work of the entire team across our entire agency to bring us to this point. Uh, looking back, it's been 50 years since uh, President Kennedy challenged us to do the other thing, not because it was easy, but because it was hard. Getting to this point has been challenging, but uh, your team, the whole team, everyone has pulled together. We're taking a little piece of uh, all of us into space, and at this point, all i got left to say is let's launch Atlantis. Thanks so much. Thank you, Scooter, and uh, enjoy the ride, pal. CLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. Atlantis OTC, best of luck upgrading the HST to increase our knowledge for light years to come. OTC, Atlantis copies, we're looking forward to it and uh, we'll give it our best. 20. Nozzle check of the SRBs, firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system armed. T minus 10, 9. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. Bypass across the board, scooter, no action. Houston now controlling Atlantis on its way. Atlantis on its way, all three engines now throttling down as the area begins, as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Atlantis. Houston, no action on the MPS H2 out P. Houston, we copy, no action. Atlantis, 
go at throttle up. Houston, Atlanta, copies, go at throttle up. Seven miles in altitude. Altitude 49,000 feet. Flight control team discussing the minor transients that we're seeing at liftoff. All three engines are in good shape. The vehicle is uh, headed downrange. All three hydraulic systems in good shape, as are the fuel cells. Atlantis is 18 miles uh, and altitude, downrange 23 miles, already traveling 2,500 miles per hour, approaching staging the burnout of the twin solid rocket boosters, which have been burning fuel at a rate of about 11,000 pounds per second. Solid rocket boosters have done their job. Atlantis is uh, continuing in its due easterly course to catch up with the Hubble Space Telescope one last time. Atlantis, single engine Banjul 104. Copy, single engine Banjul 104. Uh, that call indicating that uh, Atlantis could reach Banjul in the Gambia, although that is not a transoceanic abort landing site. Atlantis. Negative Maroon, select Banjul. Houston, we copy. Negative Maroon, selecting Banjul. Vehicle rolling to uh, heads up now to get good communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system. Six minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. Downrange from the launch site, 4,030 miles. Altitude, 353,000 feet, or about 67 miles. Press 109. Houston, we copy single engine press 109. Mike Good, first day in space. How's it going? First full day. You already had, you know, you let you blasted off yesterday. How are you feeling today? Feeling much better today. Yeah. It was a very exciting liftoff and yes. uh, trip to space. Here we are. Had a little sleep. Had a little chow. Oh, great. We're doing our work here, getting the airlock ready so we can go outside and do EVAs. All right. Which That's is why whole, we're here. It's the whole idea. And Drew, what are you doing? I'm using the tape. Is there any reason why you have sunglasses on in the mid-deck where there's no lights? Cause they look I mean, there's no, no sun? Because they look cool. Ah, that's my man. What are you doing in here? Hey, Vass. Welcome. You getting the spacesuits ready? Getting the uh, airlock ready. So how does it feel to be here after seven years? Oh, it's wonderful. All right. Like old friends. Excellent. All right, hey, Drew. How was your first day in space? Uh, it was good. Yeah? I enjoyed it. You are unbelievable, man. You were working like a maniac right from this get-go, like you you know, you were born here. I like this floating in space. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? It's a ride. We're in the mid-deck of Space Shuttle Atlantis. My buddy John Grunsfeld over here. But the person we want to talk to is behind the camera. <laughs> and now gonna be on camera. That's Megan McArthur, <laughs> who is uh, our flight engineer. And Megan, what are you doing now? Well, we just finished the starboard survey of the orbiter TPS, and yeah. I'm going to get my lunch. So I go to this locker here that says MS2 meals on it, and yeah. I pull it out. And it shows me all the food with the green dot uh, yeah. that's mine that's in here. So I look up kind of what I want to eat. Okay. This is what I was looking for, ravioli. Oh, it's man, it was great. Very tasty. I just had some. So put this away. Close this up. And then. And Houston, uh, yeah. that looks better to us. Well. There it goes. It sits in there for a few minutes to get warm, and then I can eat it because I don't like it cold. Now, how have you liked the food so far? Um, well, so far, all I've had is a peanut butter sandwich, and that was tasty. So, that was good. Yeah. Well, I'm using a computer. And just like a computer at home, we have computers in space. I'm checking our flight plans, see what we need to do, and I also can check my email. I've already got some email from my wife and my kids, and it's great to be able to stay in touch with like this. And. Uh, Great way for us to tell our friends what we're we doing and maybe even send to Twitter once in a while. <laughs> Not that often, but once in a while. But you're setting up for IMAX, you've also set up for what other kind of video? You're doing all kinds of photo 
photography We're doing high definition, so we got some high definition down right. yesterday of the ET uh, tank. Yeah. And we'll the be doing uh, this as high definition. Right. And then uh, we'll do kind of a crew summary at the end of the day. So how do you like filmmaking? You think it might be a second career for you? Could be. Yeah. After Another piloting. Thing. What kind of movies would you make? <laughs> They'd be all uh, humorous movies. Oh, all right, man. Thanks a lot, Greg. <laughs> okay, you know, great. thanks. It was a wild ascent, by the way. Any, anything else you want to say to your family? Uh, <laughs> love to be in space. I miss him, and I'll see him soon. Hey, and what about that hat? What you got think? a new Atlantis 125 hat. It's pretty sharp. Do you think it got paint spilled on it like everybody else no, does? No, I think it looks good. I think it looks great. It's Hubble Pictures in a hat. Yeah, it looks awesome. So, I had to fly it. I wanted to take it with me. Very inspiring. That's it. Well, hey, thanks a lot for being such a great commander, and I hope we can do as well in the rest of the mission as we've done so far in the first two days. Uh, what do you think? I think we will. I think uh, the best part about being a commander here is having a great crew that does everything, and I just sit around. <laughs> All right, anybody watching this, remember, this is non-edited and we're not professionals. See ya. <laughs> The uh, twin orbital maneuvering system engines uh, on the tail of uh, Atlantis firing, uh, supporting the uh, altitude increase to support the rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope. The uh, glow in the center is the uh, vertical tail of Atlantis, uh, the twin orbital maneuvering system engines, the Ohms engines providing 6,000 pounds of thrust each. Atlantis Houston, good burn, no trim required. Houston Atlantis for Star Tracker. Scooter, go ahead for Star Tracker. Yeah, Houston, uh, Atlantis can report that the Star Tracker is not the only thing that can see a star on our horizon. Uh, looking out the COAS, we see that star approaching uh, from the east. Hey, that's terrific news. Uh, I guess the last time we've seen Hubble up close was March of 02, so uh, that's uh, that's great to hear. Thank you. Uh, we hope to get a lot closer, so we'll continue. <laughs> Good call. From East Atlanta, uh, 200 feet. And Houston copies, thanks. From 200 feet, the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, first time it's been seen since uh, March 2002, the most recent servicing mission. Atlantis uh, essentially station keeping uh, while the final command sequence uh, being completed uh, before moving in for the final approach to grapple. Shuttle's uh, robotic arm is uh, in position and uh, awaiting uh, the uh, commanding from uh, Megan MacArthur as uh, she will be in charge of uh, the shuttle's uh, remote manipulator system for the grapple of the telescope. Okay, that's okay. It's maybe drifting slightly left. Uh, closure? Uh, we're stalling minus 0.05 at 151 feet. Okay, I just don't want to see the numbers get bigger. Okay, we're opening now, 155. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot one off the bottom just to see if it'll okay, take. Okay, I see you set up with body vector many, 5, pitch at 270, yaw 0, omicron 0. Uh, and I agree with that for a plus body yaw. 350 miles above the Indian Ocean, Atlantis uh, with the robotic arm in view, closing in on the uh, Hubble Space Telescope directly underneath the telescope now that uh, the two vehicles are in the proper position for grapple. Inside 100 feet to Hubble. And Houston Atlantis, we have the uh, telescope in the uh, RMS in the sector. Reggie, we copy and uh, we're pulling down the KU right now and we see that. Thank you. The bottom of uh, Hubble coming into view through the uh, remote manipulator systems end effector camera. This same view uh, uh, seen through one of the closed circuit televisions uh, up on the flight deck uh, of Atlantis. Houston Atlantis. Hubble has arrived on board Atlantis with the arm. Atlantis Houston, we copy. Nice job, uh, Megan. Nice job on the Proxops flying as well. It's great to be back with the telescope. 
I'm just looking out the window here, and it's an unbelievably beautiful sight. Uh, amazingly, the exterior of Hubble, an old man of 19 years in space, still looks in fantastic shape. Megan MacArthur, who worked the arm and grappled the telescope. Scott Altman, our commander, who flew the space shuttle in uh, formation with the telescope, going how fast? 17,500 miles an hour. Very fast. Formation. Very, very fast. Just like this. Unbelievable. So, Megan, how do you feel? What was it like? I feel good. You know, it was, uh, it was very smooth. It was very straightforward. The scooter got the... Uh, really nulled out all the rates. It was just rock solid. It was like grabbing something that wasn't moving. So uh, felt good. Glad to have that behind us so the EVA guys can get to work. And Scooter, what about you? What did you think of the rendezvous? How was it? It was exciting. Well, you said the it challenge was there. You said it was a little fast. Is that right? We came in. Uh, we had kind of uh, a little extra closure, a little out of plane maneuvering, uh, yeah. trying to get up to the telescope. We had to do some braking. And then the telescope wasn't rotated uh, for us. We had to wait. When we got there, and then do a yaw maneuver, all this. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. See, it's just a gosh. furball with that telescope. Gosh. But you are an F-14 pilot, right? Yes. So going fast, that's not a big deal. That was all right. That was okay. Coming out your way. Any words for going out the door, buddy? I'm excited. Excited, excited just like the NBL? Trying to get a last bite to eat before we go. Okay. I'm a little more excited than at the NBL. It's the real deal. Gee, are you hitting the big time here? Ray G, this is the big time, buddy. <laughs> Veteran spacewalker John Grunsfeld out of the uh, airlock, uh, recognizable by the red stripes around his pant legs and up on the backpack of his suit, the, uh, the backpack housing all of his uh, life support uh, uh, equipment. Throughout the spacewalk, we'll get uh, helmet cam video uh, from the uh, two crew members, the, uh, the highlighted uh, soft number down in the right lower portion of the screen will indicate which crew member's helmet cam you're looking at. Number 20 is Drew Foistel. If you see a number 19, that'll be uh, John Grunsfeld. Okay, Dan, so we're not going to do step two. We're going to have John go get the... Uh, short adjustable, and we will have uh, Drew, I guess, uh, we'll use the contingency MTL again. It'll take me, it'll take me just a couple of minutes. Okay. I'm the free floater. Take your time. Take your time, John. But, Dan, just to be clear, we're going to retry with the short adjustable and the contingency MTL set at 45. Is that right? Landis Houston, uh, that is uh, a good plan. That's what we we're just discussing, Mass. We think uh, short adjustable uh, with uh, contingency MTL uh, is probably the best uh, next action. 
John Grunsfeld headed down to the airlock to retrieve a uh, short adjustable ratchet uh, to assist with uh, breaking the torque on the grounding strap uh, bolt, which has uh, been a little troublesome in releasing. Okay, so Drew is uh, good to use everything he's got then to try to break the torque here. Is that correct? Mass, I'm sorry, you were stepped on. Say again. Uh, so in other words, he can uh, use what he needs from his strength to try to break the torque. Is that what you're selling, telling us? That's exactly right. And uh, as soon as he does, uh, if he's successful, start to have some motion in the latch, uh, we'd like him to go ahead and stop at that point. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Okay. But I think we understand that if it breaks, then wide field stays in. What John said is correct. Thanks. Okay, here we go. I think I got it. It turned. It definitely turned. Yep. It turned. And it's turning easily now. Very nice. Okay, and uh, Atlantis Houston for EPA, we uh, copied and saw that. That's great news. At this point, we'd like to, uh, to put the MTL back in, uh, in series with the uh, short adjustable. Well, this has been in there for 16 years, Drew. It didn't, it didn't want to come out. Kind of like a head bolt, you know? It likes what it's been doing, and it weighs 620 pounds to be exact. And it's been doing it well. 620, thank you, man. And we counted a total of 22 plus the half to 22 and a half turns on the A latch. I guess it just decided to be a recalcitrant teenager. And the wide field planetary camera two is clear of the structure of the telescope. And now uh, Foista will be maneuvered uh, by Megan MacArthur to the uh, temporary stowage location along the left side of the payload bay. The new camera now installed. The next step will be to engage the uh, bolt or the A-latch. Uh, again, expecting about 22 turns on the pistol grip tool uh, settings. Set. 10.5. For EDA. Good news from the stock. Lightness test on uh, wide field three. Hey. Good. Hooray. Oh, awesome. That's awesome news, Dan. Thanks. These guys did a great job, and we appreciate all the great support we got from the ground getting wide field in to unlock the secrets of the universe. More of the secrets. More of the secrets of the universe. The crew has been given a go for the second major task of EVA number one, that is the removal and replacement of the science instrument command and data handling system that uh, malfunctioned uh, last September, uh, delaying the servicing mission uh, from October to now. Well, we got the Hubble and uh, gave Hubble a hug, but in uh, traditional Hubble fashion, uh, Hubble threw us a few curves. I think it's really a testament to the whole team uh, on board here, on board with Atlantis, and of course on the ground. To ask Christy and everybody else, the Goddard team, that we were able to overcome them, and that we have a wide field camera three in the telescope, which will help to unlock the secrets of the universe and a new scientific instrument command and data handling. Thanks for, to everybody for all the hard work. Mike Massimino, first out of the um, airlock. He uh, is uh, beginning his third spacewalk and third to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Anybody home? <laughs> hey, Matthew, you're looking great. Colonel Good, welcome to the wonderful world of working in a vacuum. I heard RSU with your name on it waiting for you. And Mike Good now uh, in the foot restraint, uh, Megan MacArthur in control of the robotic arm. She'll be taking him back to a protective enclosure, the small 
ORU, Orbital Replacement Unit uh, Protective Enclosure, referenced uh, by the acronym SOAP. He will be uh, in charge of retrieving the new uh, um, rate sensor units and uh, handing those off to Mike Massimino, who will be uh, mounted on a foot restraint inside the telescope. And just a reminder to the both of you, watch out for the lube on the bolts. Okay. Mike Massimino's reflection uh, in the aft shroud of the Hubble Space Telescope uh, as he uh, prepares to uh, open the doors, uh, protective doors over the fixed head star trackers and the rate sensor units. Coming in. Okay, Mike, your, uh, your bags are over the top of the boot plate here. Sure. I think you can go in now, in and up. Massimino now being assisted by Michael Good uh, with positioning inside the aft shroud of the telescope. You're looking directly at one of the uh, star tracker shields. And uh, Master, if you look carefully, there's a little engraving that says Story was here somewhere. Ah, uh, you're gonna fool me. Okay, it's off. It's loose. I've got it. Excellent. Bueno, well, attempts to the PGT. Okay. Yeah, Mike, I got it. And the first uh, rate sensor unit uh, removed now from the telescope. Uh, We're good. That goes on. Uh, you can uh, unlock the ret, and it goes on top of the MFR handle. One adjustable, one ret. Planet Houston for EVA, we have a good aliveness test in RSU-2R. You have a go for RSU-3, change out. And we copy, go for RSU-3. Ready for the roll? Ready. Here it comes. Nice. Okay, do you want to get in, uh, inside that other cable or you're all right? No, I don't care. There we go. Okay. Two hours, 42 minutes into the spacewalk, uh, the crew members are having a little bit of trouble seating the uh, new unit into its uh, plate before uh, being able to drive the three bolts. This, this one feels different than the last one. Uh, the last one I was able to just put on the plate, this one feels like it won't sit flush on the plate. If I get, it's kind of rocking on it. I think it might be that, you know, those pins of diamonds are a little tighter than the uh, other the RSU-2 side. That's what and, it uh, looks like. Steve and I had a little trouble on this side as well. The view from uh, Mike Good's helmet camera as he is being repositioned down to the protective enclosure. He'll be stowing this uh, rate sensor unit. This is the one that was on the telescope originally at, uh, and since 1999 it's uh, been removed. He's going to stow that uh, permanently and retrieve the other replacement uh, RSU uh, for an attempt to install that one in the number three slot. Uh, Mike Massimino holding his position inside the telescope f at, at the install location. Mike, that feels solid. Okay. Does it look good? Looks good to me. I definitely got it. Excellent. Next, do the next poll. Zero. Yeah, that bolt is in. Great job, Mike. Okay, Mass, Bueno. Yeah. EVA 2, what do you think? It's like, go ahead. Mike. <laughs> no, go, go, you go. I was going to say, it's like a heavyweight fight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was just Hubble was throwing a, a lot of uh, punches at us, and we, uh, we fought back. Houston, I'm looking at SSR. It's a great. On page 6-76, ready to copy your delta. It was a great team effort, though, uh, between everybody inside here, okay, so everybody on the ground. It's awesome. Discussing, uh, awesome. Mass, what do you think? Well, you call it EVA-2, but I call it EVA-2 and EVA-2.5. And, a half. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how it all worked out, but apparently it did somehow. <laughs> but there was things, I don't know, was going right. You know, I remember from the beginning, nothing fit. We got this stuff, they got geniuses figuring stuff out to like the nanometer, right? Or whatever, you know, the smoke. And it's still not fitting. We're both trying stuff. I don't know what's going on out there, but somehow I think it all worked. All the curves that Hubble's been throwing us, 
There's no question that we're all living in the hope to tell us What kind of curves do you think Hubble will throw at you? I don't know. It's been uh, day of surprises each day. I thought it was only going to be the first day, but we had a second day of surprises. I'm sure today will be a third, but uh, I'm not too worried. We managed to uh, sort of power through both days and uh, get all the tasks completed and objectives done, so I'm excited about this. What do you think the uh, the real challenge is today? What's the big well, we're, challenge? We're taking out the wide field. Sorry, we're taking out the co-star today, and given the problems we had with wide field, that's been in the telescope since 1993. CoStar has been in since 1993. I'm a little bit concerned that the A latch, the latch that really holds it in tight, or the B latch, which brings it up and down, may be bound up the way it was on the, the wide field camera. Yikes. Yep. The aft shroud uh, door is coming open at 41 minutes into the spacewalk. Got that door, John? I've got this door. Hey, Megan, no more away, right only. Copy, right only. Star is free and now uh, it's ready to be removed from the telescope. Installed back in December 1993 to uh, correct the uh, spherical aberration that was detected in the telescope's uh, mirrors after its initial deploy in 1990. view from John Grunsfeld's uh, helmet camera looking forward to the aft uh, uh, flight deck of uh, Atlantis as he uh, faces the uh, long end of the protective enclosure with the new cosmic origin spectrograph instrument which soon will become uh, a permanent fixture aboard the Hubble Space Telescope just above and behind him. Origin spectrograph now in the telescope, ready for uh, final bolting and connecting of the uh, our mating of the electrical and data connections. Up tools upside down. Matt, and the little uh, e latch box rotated as it's supposed to in the downward direction. Good torque. Great job. Excellent. It's not in the whole at 11.22 a.m. Central Time, the report from the Space Telescope Operations Control Center, a good aliveness test on the newest science instrument for the Hubble Space Telescope, the Cosmic Origin Spectrograph.
through Foistel with the old instrument, CoStar, which has completed its job after 16 years in the telescope, uh, being uh, carefully placed in a protective canister for the return trip home. John, go ahead with the 9 inch and the 14 inch. Uh, you can retrieve those from the bag and brake torque on all the fasteners. We're going to retighten 1, 28, and 29. Good work. A very intricate uh, procedure to uh, swap out some uh, uh, electrical cards, essentially some uh, computer cards that uh, failed due to an electrical short inside the uh, advanced camera for surveys. The uh, fastener capture plate now removed, having done its job of uh, capturing uh, the 33, 32 tiny screws inside uh, the uh, protective uh, enclosure. And the card extraction tool uh, being secured to the uh, CEB or the, uh, the charge coupled device electronics box. Nice. I heard that. Great, John. Nice job. Nice job, John. Takes a few more turns to get it out of the uh, connector. Not that it matters. The slide lock is in the bed, in the four card. The slide lock is engaged. Okay. Copy number one is uh, in the bag, so to speak. Okay. I'm going to reset. Now he's resetting the index on the side of the uh, extraction tool to the number two slot, and he'll repeat this task uh, four times to remove all four cards. We started off this morning with Hotel Cephalina, which is where we're living here on orbit on Space Shuttle Atlantis. And I think the success of both cost and especially ACS is due to all the diligence of all the people who live in that Hotel Cephalina and made the fantastic tools and fantastic techniques that we use today, and of course the, the inventive mind that developed the CVR technology uh, borrowed from the next generation telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. It was all fantastic and enabled us to do our work today. Okay, Drew, I'm ready for the doors. Okay, ASLR is going to be first on the bottom. Close-up uh, view of uh, the Hubble Space Telescope worksite uh, by the helmet cam on uh, Michael Good as he looks down uh, into the payload bay at the bottom, working the uh, berthing and positioning system uh, uh, post, uh, locking that into place to uh, uh, provide the additional uh, stability to the telescope during the work. He's down there in the bottom of the payload bay. Mike Massimino in a foot restraint uh, inside the aft shroud of the telescope. Michael Good on a foot uh, restraint on the end of the shuttle's robotic arm. The fastener capture plate uh, visible there on the end of uh, the mini uh, workstation or the work stanchion on the foot restraint uh, up to the upper right near uh, the upper backpack of uh, Michael Good. Next step is to use a clamp removal tool to uh, assist with uh, the removal of that uh, yellow uh, handrail. You see that uh, handrail is uh, obstructing the attachment of the fastener capture plate to the work site. Mm -hmm. he, he'll probably just snap it right off. Yep. Which he just has to go really, really slow for mass, like 10 times slower. Can you grab those binoculars, Drew? The, prob the problem is, though, Jeff, he doesn't, um, I, I think if he loads it too slowly, it's just going to bend. bend. I mean, at some point, it'll fatigue, but if he... Yeah, but I don't want any little yeah. bits shooting off into a suit, right? Yeah, that's true. So, are you taking them back to the telescope? Yeah, I was. Okay, good. That was for the I tape. I don't bend too well. <laughs> I was for a point and we bent over and I thought I was going to drive him into the, uh, the W side. Okay, let me see. This thing's slow. We're going to be able to get this, Drew? 
I do actually. I think once he busts off the handrail, the rest is gonna go smooth as so. How long's the daylight for? That darn handrail. Sunset in 11 minutes. No, that's not good. Everything good happens in the day. <laughs> Well, we're going to do something bad. We're going to break something in nighttime, and then we're going to do the good stuff to get the car in. The uh, top half of that handrail uh, was freed by the fasteners being uh, released uh, very easily. The lower one, one of the uh, fasteners did not come loose, and uh, Mike Massimino used uh, essentially brute force to remove the uh, handle at the lower portion. It is now uh, free and carefully uh, stowed away. And now they're uh, basically uh, in the process of uh, conducting some tool management before they get back into the task. I've got a real good black line on the lower right, Mike. Yeah. On the upper, on the upper right here, I can just see the band of black. I really can't see it sticking out, but I can see a little band of black, right? Yeah. If you compare that to here, I really don't see any black. Right. And on the lower left, again, it's the band of black. So I can see it on the left. Yes. Yeah. I think that's as good as we're going to get this. One. Spanish Houston, great description uh, by Mass there. We copy and understand. We're happy with the current config for the removal. Uh, when we get the uh, cover off, then we'll want to snug all four. A1 is complete. We're happy A1. A2 complete. Okay, it's loose now. I see it. Good job. It's loose, and uh, I think we're in good shape as well. Like I see the wires. Okay, just a second, Mike. Let me get my hands where I need them. Don't uh, go out really small. Okay. That's good. Stop. 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 Do you know where to cut it? And it's clear in the video now, Mike Good is on Massimino's left side, reaching in with the cutters to uh, clip of two bundles of two wires, which will make the uh, cover of... Uh, uh, fully detached from the space telescope imaging spectrograph. Nice. Good job. And now moving on to replace the uh, low okay. voltage power supply card to uh, finish up the repair to the uh, STIS instrument of the Hubble Space Telescope. Hey, Mass and Boyne, I just want to, while you're closing the doors here, tell you what a great job you guys did today. And, uh, how proud we are of you, and also the fact that uh, I want you to take a look around because your uh, spacewalk with Hubble is about to come to an end. We're bringing you in as soon as you close the doors. Okay, thanks, Scooter. You is magnificent. It's uh, great to work with the world going by and being out here with a good friend, Mike Good. is a pleasure. What do you got, Mike? Uh, those are good words, Matt. It is uh, really awesome to to be able to be out here doing it. Uh, the MBL is great, but this is uh, just completely awesome out here. A lot of work, but uh, well worth it. It's a, a real privilege to get to see what we're saying and get to work on this magnificent machine. Couldn't be, uh, could be any more grateful for the opportunity. How's it look out there, Drew? It looks dark. Anybody you want to say hello to? Yeah, I'd like to say hello to everybody watching, my family, and uh, I'd like to say a special happy birthday to my father-in-law, VJ Betnagri, up in uh, Cornwall, Ontario. Wish him a uh, warm, sunny, and enjoyable day. Outstanding. Here comes the sun, Drew. Hoist will be wearing the all-white spacesuit today, which is how you'll be able to distinguish him from Mission Specialist John Grunsfeld, who will be wearing a spacesuit marked with a solid red stripe. And there's Mission Specialist John Grunsfeld making his way out of the airlock now. You could tether up over your helmet there. Yep. And as you can see, Grunsfeld is wearing the suit with the solid red stripe. See from Mission Specialist John Grunsfeld helmet camera, looking directly at the bay three that he'll be working in to replace the batteries inside. Directly to the left of it is the bay two, where Mike Massimino and Mike Good replaced batteries during the second spacewalk of the mission. Last bolt is free, Bueno, and the battery is releasing. Copy. Oh, nice 
nice silhouette on the door. What a beautiful spaceship we're on, guys. V from Mission Specialist John Gun Grunsfeld's helmet camera, now holding both the new and the old batteries, getting ready to hand the old back to Drew Foistel and then make his way back to the telescope Bay 3 to install the new one. Yeah, Bueno, happy to report uh, good aliveness test on the Bay 3 battery. You have a go for the L12 steps in step 13, your column. A copy a go on step 13, my column. Thanks, Dan. I stopped at uh, a little over six because I can see that the stop bolt is up against the pivot, pivot nut. Good job, John. Let's see if we can get that other latch bolt to behave. Yeah, I'm just going to pop this one out. I don't want to touch it with the grease. Okay, it's out of the bathtub. Copy. Okay. Flying um, across the Texas coast, headed across the Gulf of Mexico. The two astronauts, uh, two hours, two minutes into today's final spacewalk to service the Hubble Space Telescope. John's going to try again with the uh, EVA ratchet and the uh, setting of uh, 38. I'm looking on page 16-55, Dan. Step 4 says uh, A-latch fails to disengage. Uh, I think that's where we are. We would need to use a contingency MTL, which is luckily on the tool handle today, if you agree. Yeah, we, uh, we copy and we concur with that. For the procedures uh, to break the torque, they'll switch to the uh, torque limiter, uh, an extra additional tool they have on the tool caddy on the uh, yep. stanchion as part of the portable foot restraint uh, on the end of the shuttle's robot arm. Here we go, man. Go ahead, John. Good luck. I think you got it. Something happened? I think you got it. Yep. Okay. And it's moving. Great job, I'm going to go for a full half turn. Very good, John. All right. And the mirror is now clear, just coming outside the telescope. Okay. You are clear to uh, continue and increase the rate out. Yep, you can clear. increase the rate, Megan. Copy, picking up the rate. Uh, what a beautiful view. Do your special. Okay. Copy that, uh, go into the aft fixture. John Grunsfeld being maneuvered on the end of the shuttle's robotic arm by Megan MacArthur to temporarily stow the uh, fine guidance sensor just removed from the telescope. That uh, sensor will be returning home once the new uh, FGS is installed in its place on the telescope. John Grunsfeld assisting with the final uh, connectors uh, on the port or the left side of the new fine guidance sensor. This is a, a really tremendous adventure that we've been on, a very challenging mission. Hubble isn't just a satellite, it's about humanity's quest for knowledge. There are a few people that are very special to Hubble that I'd like to thank. Lyman Spitzer and John Bacall, both deceased, but without whom we wouldn't have a Hubble Space Telescope or this amazing adventure. Others who are still with us and being very productive scientists, Steve Beckwith, and uh, our President Bill Smith, Senator Mikulski and Ed Weiler, without whom we wouldn't have a servicing mission for, and of course, Mike Griffin. I think we'd all agree that without SEPI, none of this would have happened. A tour de force of tools and human ingenuity. This mission in particular, as Arthur C. Clark says, the only way of finding the limits of the possible is by going beyond them into the impossible. And on this mission, we tried some things that many people said was impossible, fixing stiff, repairing ACS, achieving all the content that we have in this mission. But we've achieved that, and we wish Hubble the very best. It's really a sign of the great country that we live in that we're able to do things like this on a marvelous spaceship like Space Shuttle Atlantis. And I'm convinced that if we can solve problems like repairing
Orion Hubble, getting to space, doing the surfacing we do, traveling 17,500 miles an hour around the Earth, so we can achieve other great things, like solving our energy problems and our climate problems, all things that are in the middle of NASA's prime and core values. As Drew and I go into the airlock, I want to wish Hubble its own set of adventures, and with the new instruments we've installed, that it may unlock further mysteries of the universe. Like Five eight, seconds, seven, the mode five. switches in auto. Three, two, one, release. I'm backing away. I see you got it open. Clear the pin. Clear the pin. Mode switches in off. Clear the antenna. Ray J, I'm calling for 10 down pulses when we uh, do this and record right. the MET. See you moving away nicely, Ray. Working to get away from the antenna as well. Okay. I can. Five feet from the telescope, not yet five feet from the antenna. And I'll need the time when you do the scooter, but I think I'm going to hear it. You will. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'd call that five feet, Megan. You've got to go for course if you don't. And yeah, just verify your flight control power's on. Flight control power's on. Okay, motion is stopped, Scooter. Okay, here comes the burn. Ten down pulses. Mark. Seven. <laughs> Twenty. That's yep. 10. Okay. Flight controller's off. Okay, I need the mic. Oh, baby, look at that. At least in Atlantis, we'll set one burn. Uh, MEG 1857. 24 feet. Okay, is that the keel, keel camera on monitor two for me? 28. The actual monitor two. In center of HS3, bottom feet. half of keel scooter inertial. 31. There it is, scooter. Okay. 35. Thank you. Opening. It's supposed to be at a rep ball of about 65. You said 35 opening. Yep. Do you have a H dot? Yeah, it's about 65 of the rep ball. Okay. Stand by for your nerve ball. Eighty-one feet. Okay, let me pull you down. One point two is what it showed, but I think that through forty. Okay, that's good. That's good. Through forty is all I need. You got a small one. One point three. Yeah, I'm three. getting it. Range ninety-nine feet. That's the shot. One hundred fifty. John, how's uh, sun point? Feet. Thanks. Check receiver two lock. Yes, receiver two lock. Okay, check PCH mode to some point. Not yet. Yeah, a little more time. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, eight, eight, eight. And Scooter at 0050 is when I show 3 plus 30 to the 5720. Okay. Do you have your maneuver ready to go? I'm putting them in now. And you can do the item 19. Hey, John. Hey, Scooter. Yeah. Yes, you grab this thing? Yeah. Thanks. Seconds for the maneuver. Right, uh, I got 1, 3, 90, 0, 0, Omicron 0. Okay. Give up the item 19. Go ahead and give me the item 19. Okay, okay intense in about uh, 8 seconds. For what? Uh, 3 plus 30. The 5740. Here we go. Just keep okay. shooting that thing. Yeah. 
Uh, you said at five minutes. I thought you said we were at 3.30. Are you at five minutes? No, I queued it up. Okay, go ahead and give me the 19. Give me the auto when we're... Atlantis is traveling 730 miles per hour altitude, 50,000 feet. And the views as the crew uh, sees it through the forward uh, windows of the orbiter, through the head, heads up display. The twin uh, sonic booms heralding the arrival of Atlantis to the uh, landing site. Atlantis. On at the 180. Copy, Houston, on at the 180. Pilot Greg Johnson now flying Atlantis. The orbiter is halfway around the heading alignment circle to line up with runway 22. The northeast to southwest approach end of uh, runway 2204. And Commander Scott Altman now uh, flying Atlantis the rest of the way. Time to touch down two minutes. Atlantis on at the 90. Houston, Atlantis copies. On at the 90. Altitude 12,000 feet. Houston Atlantis, field in sight at 10,000 feet. Copy, field in sight. Seven thousand feet. Four thousand feet. Two thousand feet. Commander Scott Altman beginning to uh, flare out the uh, vehicle, pitch the nose up as he approaches uh, runway two two from the northeast. Three hundred feet. Uh, landing gear down. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. Space Shuttle Atlantis is rolling out on runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base, completing 197 orbits of the Earth while traveling 5,276,000 miles. This landing marks the 53rd shuttle mission to end at Edwards Air Force Base. Atlanta spent seven days servicing the Hubble Space Telescope that included five spacewalks, totaling a record 37 hours. Atlantis has completed its 30th mission and the 126th in the history of the Space Shuttle program. The Hubble Space Telescope's final servicing mission is complete, but its mission of discovery is just beginning. Welcome home, Atlantis. Congratulations on a very successful mission, giving Hubble a new set of eyes that will continue to expand our knowledge of the universe. 
Thank you, Houston. It was a thrill from start to finish. We've had a great ride. It took a whole team across the country to pull it off. Our hats are off to you all. Thank you so much.